Well, good morning, church. How are we doing this morning? We doing well? It's always good to be together. And I mean, we are really together today because we are going to have our children's ministry with us, uh, leading us in worship, which should be a lot of fun. And so I can tell already that they've done this a couple of times, and so we're going to see if they can hold it together. But we have our pre-K and kindergartners who are going to sing for, your, sing for you first, so why don't you give them a hand and welcome them to the stage. fantastic thing I've seen today. I loved it. Let's give them another round of applause. Yeah, good job, kids. All right, we're going to have you greet one another. Go ahead and stand and greet one another. You're going to be sitting for a bit, so we're going to have an extended greeting time. we got to transition one group on at this time.
Well, we've got them in place, but we've got a special edition of Salem Heights today for you, so we want you to pay attention to what's next here up on the screens. Christmas is coming. Join us for a special family-friendly Christmas service at the Elsinore. We hope you can join us for either December 21st or 22nd. We will have regular 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. family-friendly services on Christmas Eve. Child care is provided for ages 0 through 3. Overflow parking is available at DeVita De Analysis on the corner of Madrona and Liberty. A shuttle will run before and after first service. We will be relocating our Sunday morning services to the Song Center at Corbin University starting January 7th. On our website, you can find a video tour to help you navigate campus while we are there a registration to tell us which service you plan to attend, as well as other information you might need to know. Men, join us for Men's Charge Friday and Saturday, January 12th and 13th at Aldersgate Conference Center in Turner, Oregon. Pastor Kelly Knaus from First Baptist Church of Cleveland, Tennessee will be joining us and teaching on what it means to be made new. Sign up today. If you are new with us today, we're so excited that you are here. We would love to connect with you. Visit our Connect Center after service to get answers to your questions. You can fill out or scan the visitor card in the seat pocket in front of you to let us know you're here today. Have a great week! Yeah, let's give them a hand for doing that. Great that they put that together. So here we are as one big happy family, and we're going to have some fun today. And so kids, are you excited to be here today? Yeah, yeah good. Well, we're excited to have you. So why don't we give them a round of applause? They're going to lead us here in a couple songs. We'll just have you stay seated for the first couple songs.
them a hand for that song.
Why don't you pray with me if you would? Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for um, this time that we've had where, where we get to be together literally as a whole church. Um, it's amazing that we've that we fit in the room this morning. Uh, but we're thankful. We're thankful for the, the work that the kids have put in, uh, working for weeks on this music and spending time. And we're so thankful for um, uh, just their ministry to us even this morning. We pray now that as we uh, look into your word, we pray that as usual, that it would change us, that it would mold us. Um, just so thankful for your love and your kindness to us and we give you god glory in this moment in this uh season for what you've done sending your son to us we're so thankful now and pray that you'd help us um, to, to hear from you in christ's precious name and all god's people said amen well were you blessed by that this morning We were reminiscing with a few folks as they're uh, very thoughtfully going off the stage here this morning. Um, in the early years, the stage used to be a couple of feet higher and uh, parents would come up to the front mostly just to protect their kids from falling. Uh, but the kids thought that that was an opportunity to jump into the arms of mom or dad. And so we had a lot of crowd surfing going on in those early years and it was much more nerve wracking. But let's give them one more hand for uh, doing such a good job getting off of here. First service, we had a parent that actually got a Charlie horse from smiling so much. And so uh, we're thankful to have something happy. I watched a little uh, a gal come up uh, on the line trying to, get, trying to be quiet on the way in uh, to the auditorium. And uh, she couldn't help it. She just shouted out, my sister's got a solo this morning, so even the kids are having fun. We're really thankful. Uh, why are Pete and I here this morning? Uh, just two quick thoughts as we're getting ready to uh, transition to hear a, a message from uh, Pastor Tim. Um, two things that we're uh, aware of and we want you to be aware of this morning. One, uh, we know that as we're in this season right now, celebrating, spending a lot of time together, uh, there's signs around the church that say uh, construction is going on or the parking lot might seem a little bit full. It might feel a little bit squished at times, cramped as we're all here together. Uh, but we're thankful for the family feel. And uh, we're also aware that uh, there might be some, uh, some tough times as we transition uh, to putting in a balcony here and going out to Corbin uh, for an eight-week period. And so what we uh, want to do is make sure that any information that you need, there's a lot of good questions that have come up. Uh, we're eager to answer those questions. We're, we're not going to do a lot of that on a Sunday morning, but we'll make those available on the website uh, and through the main office. So if you have questions or concerns about what's happening in the building project uh, or about the process of getting out to Corbin, we understand that. We want to answer those questions. The main thing is this. Uh, we want you to, to feel welcome and to be a part of the family. We know that as a family, there might be some growing pains for eight weeks. We're looking forward to uh, the completion of that part of the project so we can be back in here. Uh, and if you're having a hard time, we want you to also understand we're just thankful that you're here to worship with us, and we're going to do what we can uh, to enjoy that season together. Amen? Amen. Uh, but the second thing is that in all of the beauty, the busyness of what we had this morning, it, you might miss some of the, the different workers that helped put all of this together. And there's one in particular this morning that we wanted to highlight. Yeah, a few months ago, we uh, introduced to our church family, Pastor Tim Saffields, as our new pastor of family life. And we were really excited about uh, him being able to move into that role and oversee all of the student ministry from the nursery all the way up through our young adult ministry and uh, we talked about building a team that would come alongside Tim because this ministry is growing, which we're so thankful for with so many kids and so many servants. And one of the per, uh, people that has joined our team that specifically works with our staff and our children on Sunday mornings when, when we're in here getting fed by God's word and worshiping together, uh, she is overseeing a team that is not just watching the kids until the service is over, but helping our servants disciple these kids to know and love Jesus. And we want to officially introduce you to, her, uh, you to her as our D6 Sunday morning coordinator, and that is Michelle Saffield. So Michelle, would you come out here? Yeah. 
Michelle is much more of a behind the scenes wanting to push other people forward. And so we asked her, though, to come out so that we could introduce you to her because many of you already know Michelle. She's been serving here faithfully with her husband, Tim, for so many years. Um, but she has been overseeing our Sunday mornings for several months now. And as we head into this season of relocation, she, you're going to be hearing from her. She's going to be directing and caring for our kids and families during that entire time. And we're so thankful for her and what she is doing to help come alongside you as parents to disciple our kids to love Jesus. Yeah, I think I was sharing with First Service that uh, uh, the church might not know this, but uh, Michelle and her sister did the honor for Christina and I 31 years ago. Uh, you were actually at our wedding. Yeah, and uh, throwing flowers around and doing all the beautiful tricks that uh, you did as a family. So 31 years ago, Christina and I uh, got married. And then today, though, 13 years ago, uh, you reciprocated and invited me to your wedding. Uh, <laughs> you and Tim got married. And so we've known your family for a very long time, uh, your folks, uh, but then also you. And this is one of the stories that has gone alongside you all the way back to those little days as you were helping your sister be able to get that job done. Uh, you have uh, been known for this, grace, a love for families, and a love for children. But one of the particular gifts that you're putting on display for us right now is you not only love families and love kids, you have an ability to organize them and still love them. <laughs> and you're gifted at it. You're, you have a, a gracious way of being able to interact and uh, bless the, those people. And you speak about it with such joy. Uh, you're a, a gift to our church. We're so thankful that uh, you stepped up and said yes uh, for many years uh, you have uh, been kind of a package deal with Tim, where you, wherever he would go, you would go. But this is one of those things where uh, you're, you're kind of uh, running the ship on your own, but with a team of amazing volunteers that are really wonderful. So we're thankful that you uh, have chosen to help. And so before Tim comes up and preaches this morning, we want to pray for Michelle and just pray a Thanksgiving prayer to the Lord for this season. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much this morning for the gift of these children, their voices singing the truth of who you are and what you've done for us, sending your son into the world. We're so thankful for the team of servants who come along faithfully every week to disciple young children, to partner with their parents, and to help them see how much God loves them. And so we pray for Michelle, we pray for her in this role, we're thankful for her and her many gifts, and ask that you would give her wisdom and direction as she leads that team. We thank you for her and Tim and their many years of faithful service, and we look forward to serving alongside them for many years to come. And God, we pray now for Pastor Tim as he brings your word. We pray that your Holy Spirit would give him clarity and that we would hear from you this morning. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey. Well, that was cool. Hey, good morning. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's so nice. Well, so glad that you could be here today. Uh, man, thank you to, uh, I think all the parents that were here first service might have already left. There might still be a couple in here, but uh, knowing behind the scenes what takes place to get them up here, that's a lot of work, okay? What goes on behind the scenes to get them looking that good, and all of them left uninjured for the most part. I mean, that's... Yeah, we can put our hands together for that, okay? They did such a good job. Man, so, uh, so encouraging to see them, and hopefully you were encouraged this year uh, to see our children's ministry and uh, them praise our great God. Um, I, I see a couple middle schoolers and high schoolers in here, and I, I got something here for one of y'all. Now, the, the kid every single year who uh, is hard to give a gift to is the kid who has a birthday near Christmas. Is there anyone out here, middle school and high school, that has a birthday that's close to Christmas. Anyone? It's got to be middle school or high school. Anyone? Yeah? What? January 12th. January 12th. Can anyone beat that? No? What? We got another one? When's yours? December 3rd. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey, come on up here. Yeah, dude. Come here, bro. Hey, let's give him a round of applause. Sorry, man, you can't take the youth pastor out of me, okay? Hey, uh, tell everyone your name. Uh, my name's Connor. This is Connor. That's great. Uh, what grade are you in? I'm a junior. Junior. What school? I got a Sprague. Awesome. That's great. That's great. Okay. Um, you got to uh, commit to me one thing, okay, here, Connor. Yep. I'm going to give you this gift, 
and I'm going to show it to you, but you can't tell anyone what it is. Right. I'll let everyone know what it is here in a couple minutes, but I'm going to give this to you at the end of the service, and you get to keep this, but you can't tell anyone. All right. Got it? Okay, okay. Yep. No peeking. Okay, you got it? Mm-hmm. Okay. You feeling that? Yep. Okay, that's good. Uh, don't, don't keep your emotions inside. That's good. Okay. Uh, Connor, let's give Connor a, a round of applause there. Now, I just want to let you know, it's pretty legit, okay? Uh, Connor, way to go. Way to be a good sport, man. Now, who in this room wants to know what's in here? Just wondering. Anyone? Yes? I'm not going to tell you. You got to wait, Okay. That's a thing called anticipation. Now, we're going to talk about that here this morning just for a little bit. But to bring us up here uh, uh, to speed, the last couple weeks, Pastor Justin has been encouraging us and inviting us to consider the season of why Christmas is so special. What makes it so special? Our world likes to package this season with its certain uh, uh, things, but really most of them we can run right by. At Christmas, we were reminded a couple weeks ago uh, in Galatians chapter 4 and in 2 Corinthians that reconciliation is put on display as Christ comes. And he uh, desires that those that are far would be brought near. That a table would be set, maybe even in your own family, in your own life, and really your own heart, that you would leave an open space for someone who is far away, knowing that we were once those that need to be reconciled. And God brought us close. And then just last week, uh, we were reminded that at Christmas, uh, that he brings the least, the last, the lost to himself. And through relationship, uh, Christmas goes from just a hallmark season to one of deep impact, one that changes eternities. Overall, the theme in this series has been this, is that the warmth of Christmas is born out of the grand themes of the gospel, the stories The lights, the food, the festivities, all those things really find its root and its reason in the gospel. And today I invite us to uh, consider that uh, it's not only the reconciliation, the relationship, but also the rejoicing that we see at Christmas that makes it so special. Uh, If you would, open up your Bible here this morning to Luke chapter 2, and we're going to be reading a pretty good portion of scripture here this morning. So I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to read it together. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you uh, for what was put on display just a couple minutes ago. Hundreds of uh, brothers and sisters, many who are watching their parents follow you, watching their leaders follow you, many singing to you, maybe even for the first time, God, proclaiming the good news of your arrival your death, your burial, and resurrection. And God, we come here even to this moment here on a Sunday morning to pause, to stop, and to consider how good you have been and how much we can rejoice in you. God, we love you and pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. We'll be in Luke chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 22. It says this, When the days of their purification according to the law of Moses were finished, They brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. This being Mary and Joseph with baby Jesus. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord. A pair of uh, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Side note. If you had a turtle dove or a pigeon being your sacrifice, that would have been a sign that you were poor, that you were not uh, someone who was able to support uh, really the purchase of a lamb. But isn't it interesting that in their arms was the lamb? Back to our schedule. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to Israel's consolation. And the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, he entered the temple when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform for him what was customary under the law. Simeon took him in his arms, praised God, and said, Now, Master, you can dismiss your servant in peace, as you promised. For my eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it. In the presence of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people Israel. 
His father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and told his mother Mary, Indeed, this child is destined to cause the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed. And a sword will pierce your own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was also a prophetess, Anna, a daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was well along in years, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. And was a widow for 84 years. She did not leave the temple, serving God night and day with fastings and prayers. At that very moment, she came up and began to thank God and to speak about him to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. If you believe those things happen, say amen. Amen. Now... We, we arrive at these moments knowing that there had already been some angelic conversations. An angelic announcement. Shepherds had already greeted this couple. This baby, Jesus, was eight days old. And we find here in this moment two individuals, two characters in our story here for this morning, and they had anticipated much. And our first big point that we don't want to miss here this morning is, is that at Christmas, what makes it so special is that the anticipation leads to rejoicing. Here we see this in the life of Simeon. Did you catch those things? He was righteous. He was devout. He was looking forward to something. He was looking forward to Israel's consolation. And maybe in your translation, it might say comforter. This man was a senior saint. He was a senior saint who loved God's word. He would look back to back in Genesis and throughout the prophets, and he was looking forward towards something. Well, what was he looking forward towards? The consolation of Israel. He was a Messiah watcher. He was looking for the person who would tie up all the loose ends and then bring them to fruition and that the kingdom of God would be restored. This man also, did you notice, three times something signified his character, something signified who he was. It says that the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he wouldn't see death and that he was guided by the Spirit to the temple. This man was Spirit-led. This man was close to God. He abided in a close relationship with his Savior. And in particular, and don't miss this, Simeon receives a specific vision similar to Mary that something was going to happen specifically, that you would see the Messiah. No one else got that. Simeon was promised that he would receive a moment where he would not die until he saw the Messiah. And so I can imagine there in that, on that day, maybe it was a Sunday morning like this, and receiving this vision, you're not going to die until you see the Messiah. And he shows up at the local synagogue. And there goes old senior saint Simeon walking by. And why is he going to the nursery today? He's, he's helping people get checked in. And you see his eyes scanning. He's looking at that couple. No, 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 no. He's looking at that couple. No, looking at, no. And then all of a sudden, he sees him. He sees him. He sees this couple and an eight-day-old child and walks up. I've been reading about you. I know who you are. I know who you are. And proclaims it, and everyone stops and goes, why is old man Simeon so excited? I've been reading about this one. The next passage actually proclaims a song that many attribute to him as he takes baby Jesus in his arms and he says, now, master, I can depart in peace. I can die. It's come true. You promised that this was going to happen. My eyes have seen your salvation. The promise that you had been given to so many, I get to see. And in the presence of all these people, not just for the nation of Israel, but for the Gentiles, for those that don't even know who this is, I get to see him, the one who Genesis talked about, the one who would crush Satan's head, be born of a woman that would come from the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, through the line of David, be born of a virgin, be born in the town of Bethlehem. Now, I don't know if he knew all those things, but he was watching he was watching for this one, and he held him in his arms. He was here. Christmas had showed up. That anticipation led to rejoicing. 
Now I'm wondering, how many of y'all still are wondering what's in this? Here we got, okay, okay. Now, have you also wondered why, why do we wrap gifts? Have you ever considered that? Did you know that in America, that we spend $2.6 billion every year on wrapping paper? You consider that? Like, I think I read a stat somewhere that's like four point, what is it? 4.6 million pounds of wrapping paper. That's a lot. Now, to take the heat off of Americans, let's think about the UK. They spend enough money on wrapping paper to have 227,000 miles. That's enough times to go nine times around the earth with just wrapping paper. That's a lot. But why do we spend all this money on wrapping paper? Because I could give Connor the gift and be like, yo, bro, here you go. Right? But what are you feeling right now? What's inside? What's inside? Okay, and we see this. We see this yearly. You might have something that you've been working on. See, I'm milking it right now. You just want me to open it up. But <laughs> you might have some gift that you've been working on for years and years and years. I've actually been given a gift like that, where someone gave me a gift that they worked on for years and it was wrapped. They could have just told me the whole time, but they wanted to see my response. They wanted to see my reaction, and it was wrapped. And there was care. And for 25 days, we actually like subject our children to wait, to look at the thing under the tree and they don't get it open yet. Why? Because the anticipation builds. And then all of a sudden on Christmas morning, there's a moment of rejoicing. Can I let you know some? There was a, there was people praying for you to come to know Christ personally. Your life was wrapped in a lot of things too. Your life was wrapped in a lot of things. I don't know what those were. But people were praying and praying and praying about what was inside and what God was going to do. And then God showed up in your life and then we rejoice. It just happened last week. People got baptized and there was a rejoicing that happened in this room. Why? Because we saw God open the box. And we saw God take people that didn't know Christ, that were far from him, and brought him to himself. And we praise him. We praise him. Now inside this box for Connor is a hundred bucks this morning. And you rejoice at that. Yeah. Yeah, you better buy your mom something nice, bro. Okay, okay, okay. We'll talk afterwards. But can I ask you right now, whose life right now is wrapped with the stuff Whose life right now that you know personally are you praying for? Whose life right now at this Christmas season are you anticipating coming to know him? And for years and years, it's like, how's God going to unwrap this gift? Don't stop praying. When that day comes, when they come to know him personally, there's going to be a rejoicing. Write that name down, even right now. We do this all the time in youth group. Don't leave today without praying for that person. Write that name down. At Christmas, we experience this warmth. We see that God first showed up in our own lives and the rejoicing even considering what he's done. And that anticipation leads to rejoicing. Now, our second character that we were introduced to earlier, her name was Anna. And in this testimony, we see she didn't receive any magical dream like Simeon did. She didn't receive any amazing prophecy. No, no. She didn't receive any of that. All she was was a witness. She just saw this happen. But there's some character qualities about her that I think stand out and even here for this morning we should look. We should look at. It says this about Anna. She was the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher and she was a prophetess. Now it's important to note and to remember who's writing this. Luke is the one who has authored this letter, and he's writing to a gentleman named Theophilus. And in this, he says actually that it's based on eyewitness testimony. So you could either go talk to Anna or someone that knew Anna and verify that this really happened. This stuff really is real. (laughs) This really did happen. It's based on truth. And she was well along in years. We got another senior saint. And this lady What happened to her life? Well, she was married and then she was widowed. And for 84 years, some believe that she spent every single day of her life at the temple. Fasting, praying, serving, 
This was a woman of worship. This is a woman who loved God, loved his people. And she didn't leave. I could see her also going, wait a second. What's old man Simeon doing over there? I, I've heard about this guy. Why is he always hanging out in the nursery? Wait, he looks really excited. He is an excitable character, but today's different. And she walks over and she hears him yelling and screaming, saying, I found him. I met him. Here he is. And he's holding in his arms Jesus, the one that was said the government would rest on his shoulders, the one that would be called Emmanuel, the one that says that God would be with us, the one who hung the starry skies is here. And what's her response? It's to praise, it's to rejoice, but it doesn't end there. It says that she began to thank God and to speak about him to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. She too was a Messiah watcher. She too knew who had come, who had showed up. Now, this response of sharing after rejoicing, it's not new to us. And we're gonna see it happen I guarantee it here in just a couple weeks. Those AirPods that you got your kid, that switch, those cool new shoes, a backpack that your dad got you, we've seen it for many years in youth group. The next time we have a youth group moment, they show up and I was like, hey, what's up, Johnny? Hey. Hey, why why are you bringing a backpack to church? Oh, you noticed? Right? What happens? I mean, they received a gift and they want to let everyone know about it. Okay? That's not new. They're excited. They're rejoicing it and they want you to share in the same gift. Now, one of the things, one of the moments for me that makes me reflect on the warmth of this season and how the world even finds its packaging and its, its warmth is found in this Christmas story. And the world tries its best to even illustrate it. And it does so in the story of uh, the classic film, It's a Wonderful Life. And we find here a gentleman by the name of George Bailey. Now, George Bailey uh, was a, is a fictional character, and this story is written in 1946. And it's actually also based upon, loosely, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. George Bailey, if you don't know who this guy is, is the gentleman holding something in his hands there. And he was a selfless man. Any money that he got, he gave away. The money that he received for education, he gave to others. The money and the finances that he received went to those who were in need. The money even for his own honeymoon fund went to those in the community when there was a run on the bank. Well, by accident, this George Bailey, who oversaw the Bailey building alone, took the money and gave it to one of his workers, his own relative, and it got mistakenly put aside. It went missing, and it left George liable for fraud. He was a criminal. He would be a criminal. And all the money that he had to his name was gone, and others would go with him to the jail. Not knowing what to do, George, contemplating his next steps, found himself on this bridge, contemplating suicide, taking his own life, questioning, what good am I for? What good am I here for? Why am I important? My life's a mess. It's a wreck. I've ruined everyone's life. And he's about to jump. And if you know the story well, we meet another character. His name's Clarence. And Clarence is a fictional angel who jumps in right before him. And what does George do? Only what he's done the rest of his life. He jumps in and saves him. Selfless yet again. And Clarence takes George on a journey, a dreamlike one, asking the question, what would it be like if you hadn't existed? Sleazy businesses, rampant crime, friends imprisoned, family dead, and a wife who doesn't know you. And he's left at this end of a story back on this bridge saying, oh God, God, take me back. I want to live. I see that my life matters. I see that I am important. I see that I need to be here. And what does he come to the conclusion? He comes to the conclusion that he's the richest man in town. He has family, he has friends. 
And the next scene, we find him proclaiming down the street, Merry Christmas, you old movie hall. Merry Christmas, Emporium. Merry Christmas, you old Bailey Building and Loans. Merry Christmas, Potter. And he proclaims this good news of Merry Christmas. His situation hasn't changed, but yet his heart and his mind has. Believer, can I let you know something here this morning? If you know Christ personally, you're the richest person in town. You are. Scripture says that you have an inheritance that's incorruptible, unfading. It will never fade away. It will never die. You can't lose it. You have been given a gift that will last for all of eternity and worth more than just a couple dollars. It's been wrapped in God's love and he said, I want you to accept this, but now don't keep it to yourself. Don't put it in your stocking and let it just turn into mold, muck, and mire. No, share this and proclaim Merry Christmas to the world around you. Because God's done a great work in you, now share this. Let that rejoicing be shared to the world. It needs it. It needs it. I'd have you close your eyes this morning and just consider this. Knowing just the size of this room, there could be someone here today who doesn't feel rich. We're not talking about money. But you might be sitting here today saying, I, I don't have that inheritance. I don't have the hope and the joy. I feel like my Christmas is hollow. Would you place your heart and your cares and what you are even walking through right now in the God who loves you and who's brought you here? He would say this to you through his word, that he loves you. That he knows your thoughts before you think them. He knows where you're going to go before you go there. He knows your hurts, your pains. He holds all of your tears in a bottle is what scripture says. And that every single sin that you've ever committed, he did not want you to pay the penalty for that. So he came here, showed up, showed up here 2,000 years ago, lived a completely perfect life, died on the cross, was buried and rose again for every single one of your sins. And he is inviting you to become rich today, not in the earthly means, but in a relationship with the God who owns the universe and who owns every single moment. He invites you into relationship now. And all you have to do is trust him, believe in him. And you have this relationship and this family for eternity. If that's you here today, just believe it's a simple belief in that. No good work, nothing, any, any work of yourself. No, it's a complete trust and belief in what he has done. And if you're here today and say, I believe that. I've been a believer for many years, but I'm struck with these two individuals and the rejoicing that they have and then the sharing. Could it be that the inheritance that you've been given has started to turn a little dim? Maybe you've started to mute this inheritance and start to get distracted by all the shiny things. Consider the gift that you've been given. Who needs to hear it? Who is that person that you are praying for? Who is that person that needs to know that through Christ, they can become the richest person in town? God, thank you so much for your love. If there is someone here today that doesn't know you, I pray that they do place their faith in you. And if there is someone here today saying, God, I want the world to know Make that call today. Make that call today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this time. Thank you for our children, our families. And we thank you for giving us an inheritance that will never go away. And we rejoice in that. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. That'd be appropriate for us to wrap up with this song. Go tell it on the mountain. Tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go Tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born Wild shepherds Wild shepherds kept their watching Oh, 
silent thoughts by night Behold throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and on the mountains that Jesus Christ was born. Let's sing that third verse. And down in a lonely manger our humble Christ was born and brought us God's salvation that blessed Christmas Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. We've been called to this, so we go and we tell it on the mountain. Cause over the hills and everywhere go Tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born That Jesus Christ That Jesus Christ is Oh yes That Jesus Christ we had a great time today, didn't we? Can we give the kids and the families involved a another round of applause? Also, Pastor Tim for a wonderful message today. Very, very fun. Great message. Well, as usual, we're always going to have some of our folks, some of our pastors uh, will be up front and others to be able to pray with you. If you have something going on in life that you would like somebody to just walk alongside you and pray with you about, we would love to do that. For the rest of you, go enjoy the rest of your week and Merry Christmas. You are dismissed. <laughs>